one of our check-in questions for today is what color best represents how you're feeling right now? Great. Right here today, being here with everyone, my color would be bright red, bright orange, bright yellow. But before I got here, it was gray. <laughs> and the whole week was gray. And right now I'm feeling pink and happy and blue, not blue. In truth, we chose the title Out of Isolation because there are too many women that are in isolation. Many of the women that come are otherwise not accessing a variety of different therapeutic service can't afford private therapist. Women who often don't have status, women who are involved in various uh, legal systems, you know, they got a lot on the go and plus they're experiencing violence. The aspect of it being drop-in and sort of immediate need is really, I find, valuable. We're not taking identifying information, we're not asking history. It's literally, you're interested in the group, come on in. I'm one of the group facilitators, so I'm co-facilitating at Sistering. What Sistering has is such a profound drop-in program, and it's open for 24 hours. You know, there's food there, there's meals, there's different programs. It can happen in a place that they're already comfortable and familiar with. But at the same time, what we offered from Barbara Schleifer Clinic is our expert in trauma. Basically, we're looking at trauma, but without necessarily advertising that that was happening in the group. Not all women necessarily want to enter a place that says, I have experienced violence and I need psychoeducation on this. So a lot of it, I understand, was around self-care. Coping strategies, giving a place for women to be able to say, this is what I need right now, this is what I need today. And that's part of mindfulness practice is we place attention to all the different aspects of trauma, but in a way that is also giving people an opportunity to, to try something. There's uh, an opportunity to practice uh, mindfulness in sort of snippets, so like in a, in, in a way where we start with a breathing exercise of like uh, three minutes. It was not hard to recruit women for that group. We created a flyer over here. We sent it over to Sistering and they posted. People recruited other people, and so it was, let's set a sort of a space for 20, and then people recruited other people. It really worked by word of mouth, and that's because for so many of the women who participated in the group, it really resonated for them. So they brought their friends. There were moments where I really didn't, I truly did not know if there were gonna be 20, 25. There's something too about facilitating an open group that's very different from facilitating a closed group because you never know what to expect. There was an aspect of being creative in the moment as a facilitator, ready for all of what's going to happen. So for example, you can have a shutdown or you can have someone who is hyper aroused and they even might present as being angry or aggressive. So we need to understand what's motivating the behavior and be able to kind of bring them into the group. Right? while maintaining the safety of the group. Is the demand there? It's absolutely there. That we saw every week. The room could only accommodate so many women. So not all the women could be accommodated in the room. The group started at 10. There were times where women were already lining up by 9.15. You know, it's dark and it's cold out. But 20 women and, and more were lining up outside. I find that that's really telling of how willing women are to be able to participate in a group when the space is created for them, right? But the work can't just be in one model of practice. We would like to do more research. And really have women give input of what it is that they need.